Hello and welcome. It is October right now when we are recording this webinar, and that can mean only one thing, that RESCO's autumn release is available and we want to introduce it to you. So today, me, Juraj Moig, head of product at RESCO, with the team of product managers, Eduard Kessely, Peter Matejik and Miroslav Maitas, we would like you to walk you through the features and additions to RESCO version 14.2. So welcome again. Uh, as usual, I will start with a couple of organizational things. So this webinar is being recorded so you can watch it later uh, or it will be also uploaded on the YouTube. You are in listen only mode and cannot ask questions via voice, but feel free to write them into the go to the go to webinar window where we will answer them at the end of this webinar session. So all the questions that you might have, feel free to write them there. As usual, we have quite a lot of improvements and enhancements we would like you to walk you through. So let's better get started. Our autumn release was made available on September 28th. So just a couple of days ago and really fresh from the oven, so to say. It's quite feature packed. And today we divided the agenda into following sections. At first, we'll look at inspections or questionnaires and look at how the workflow for longer questionnaires has been optimized. A very demanded feature, a grid or table layout of questions in the questionnaire has been added. Now it's also easier to uh, capture media, especially images within the questionnaires. And finally, we, make it, we made it quicker to create a questionnaire if you like to work in Excel and prepare your questions there. We also look at the new improved UI uh, on the RealWare device. And of course, walk through the additions in all the platform uh, features, such as hierarchy trees, the added surge and preloading of items. Let me know in the, in the questions if you are already using the hierarchy tree in your projects. We redesigned schedule board, so it's now easier to use and also added working hours for resources in a preview mode. We'll also look at the routes AI, so our optimization uh, feature on the route planner and now that can the traffic can be used. And also we added JavaScript support for route planner for more flexibility and configuration. We also enabled AR calls on Dynamics uh, so you can now make the AR calls uh, also from this environment and uh, edit advanced mobile report configuration UI. All of these features are available in our platform, meaning that on the Dynamics, Resco Cloud or, Sal or Salesforce, you can use all the questionnaires and platform improvements. So with all this, I would like to hand the word over to my colleague Miro Maitas to walk you through the inspection additions. Hello and welcome to everybody. Today, it's my pleasure to tell you about the capabilities and inspections we worked on during the summer months and are, are now able to present it to you. I personally think they are really cool and useful, so let's start with the first one. I'll talk about the optimized workflow for longer questionnaires with a lot of groups. So often with our customers, there is a business need for longer questionnaires. Either the process is complicated and there is a lot of steps to be completed, or there is multiple things to be worked on. And the reality at the workplace is that sometimes the work doesn't happen in the exact order depending on how the conditions allow it or not. So we asked ourselves these questions. What can we do for the technicians to be able to navigate within a long questionnaire needing to go back and forth but without too much scrolling? And how to make the workflow more smooth without introducing too much complexity. So the motivation was to use 
the existing elements of our underlying architecture and platform and not to bring additional hierarchical concepts to maybe confuse things further. And I think we came up with a simple and elegant solution. We are introducing auto-collapsible groups that can be also completed. So what's behind this description? Let's unpack it. There is a new questionnaire-wide setting that will allow only one group to be opened at a time. That means uh, only one questionnaire group is open or expanded. And when technician taps to expand another group, the previous one is collapsed automatically. This way, the collapsed group can serve as a navigation index and allow uh, people to stay in control. Furthermore, groups can have a visual attribute when they are completed, further helping technicians to have a good overview of work done and work to be done. Conditions for group completedness can be set in rules. I'd like to show you how it works in a short demo. So. In the questionnaire designer, I am heading over to a new setting group expansion and I'm going to change it from default to a single group. That means uh, with the setting on that the auto uh, collapsible, co collapsibility of group is, is turned on and only one will be uh, expanded at a time. Now I want to demonstrate to you how to make the group uh, to be completed. So I picked a group engine room and in this in this group there are questions that I want to be completed by the technician and when the conditions uh, are met and these questions contain data, uh, the group completedness will uh, turn to turn to be true. So, here I'm uh, creating the conditions for, for the questions within the group. And I'm adding a step for uh, the completion status. So I go to question groups, pick the right group, and uh, I pick the attribute complete and assign it a value of 100. That means the group is going to be completed. So when I'm satisfied, I finish the questionnaire and I go to the app and in the application we can see uh, that the first group is expanded and all the other groups are collapsed. So when I click on the cabin exterior, uh, the cabin interior group is automatically collapsed, right? But I as a technician I'm in the engine room and I want to work there so um, I start completing the questions in that group and when I finish that, the uh, conditions of the rule are met and we can see the green check mark uh, being lit uh, on the engine room question group. So this gives me as a technician overview that I completed that and I can go to work and work on another group of questions. So we think this is going to be useful for technicians and it will result in a clearer flow and quicker, better navigation in longer questionnaires. Next topic is table or grid layout of, for questions. There are scenarios when it's better to have questions placed side by side or in a table, like when you do check-in or check-out, you want to reuse answers and see the previous result next to the field you're working on. Or perhaps you need to do multiple readings of an asset property and better layout to support it is to do it in line. So some questionnaire use cases really call for a table layout of questions. And from now on, it will be possible to define the layout of questions either for root or questions in a group. And each group's layout need to be uh, defined separately. 
So first, what I need to do is change the layout type from list to grid. And when I click on the grid layout edit button, an editor appears and it is possible to add and delete rows and columns, drag and drop questions and arrange them into a desired layout. And uh, this is how the result looks in the app. The question group is organized into a table with two columns. So starting with this release, we're giving you more flexibility with question arrangement. Now we are going to have a look at another huge improvement for technicians and those people that create uh, questionnaires. And that's easier image and media capturing. At workplace, technicians need to capture multiple pictures before, after, or during their work. And for it is difficult to anticipate beforehand how many pictures should be taken when you design a questionnaire. So the call was simple. Allow adding multiple pictures or media files using the existing image question. The image question already allowed you to capture different media, audio or video before this release. So we renamed it to better reflect the nature and possibilities of this question type. But what is key is we now allow to set a number of images uh, or media that can be captured using a single image question. And we brought a new HTML component into the app that allows adding, deleting, and editing images. Best way to show how it works is in a demo always, so let's see. So I have an existing questionnaire and I'm uh, picking a image and media question and heading over to the settings pane, properties pane, and there is a new setting, max count, that allows me to set the maximum number of media to be taken for a me image and media question. There are new properties for images. It is now possible to set max, maximum width and height of the picture and uh, as well to determine whether the technician should have access to capture photo, select photo or image editing. I leave that on. And for media, there's similar options, but this time I can decide if I want to allow recording audio, video, or importing the existing files. So how does it look in the app? Uh, I want to select multiple pictures, so I can do just that and multiple pictures can be added. I can, uh, later on, I can delete uh, pictures if I don't like them. Here is how it looks uh, with the thumbnails. I can also return to the back to the question and uh, add another image if, if that situation requires it. And these images should be also reflected in the automatic report that you define in the questionnaire designer. And, uh, the, the images should be available there as, as well without uh, needing to do much work. So starting with this release, multiple images can be added in a single question along with other media. Last of our latest additions to inspections is a new way, more effective way in some cases, of creating new questionnaires. So when a new customer starts with inspections adoption, they need to create and design some new questionnaires. The thing is, they usually have uh, the existing forms in, in a digital form, right? So they would like to have a way to import those into questionnaire designer easily. The task for our product development team was pretty obvious. Make the process of creating questionnaires from scratch quicker and get those questions into questionnaire designer in bulk 
rather than copy pasting questions one by one. So in this iteration, we are coming with an assisted questionnaire creation. We allow to import questions that are arranged in an Excel file as a step in the flow of the new questionnaire creation. So what is the process? Uh, you take an existing digital form and use it to prepare an Excel file where you copy paste the question from your digital form file. Then you import the file uh, in the questionnaire wizard and adjust the questions you need to import or you want to import. And when you finish, you can continue working with those questions in the questionnaire designer. So let's say I have this uh, digital form and there are questions I need to get to the questionnaire designer. So I head over to questionnaire designer and uh, create a new questionnaire. But instead of blank template, I uh, select the upload and convert option. And in order to get the Excel template, I need to click on the link that is highlighted. And when I do that, uh, a Excel file template is open. So let's have a look at what's there. The first column, group name, uh, means that uh, we define groups in this column. And the corresponding questions in the third column are uh, added to the respective group. Empty cell means that the question is root and or without a group. The second column, repeatable group, uh, is just a flag that determines whether the group is going to be repeatable or not. The third column, question name, uh, will contain the questions I'm going to import into this template. The fourth column, question type, uh, contains a drop-down list of all the question type options we available in the questionnaire designer. And the last column, question options, allows to set options for the, for the so-called choice uh, questions. And the choices can be delimited with a pipe symbol. So I go back to my digital PDF form. I copy the questions, select and copy them, and I paste them into the Excel uh, template file. And what I did, I deleted the uh, first and second column because my form is not going to have groups. And this is raw output, how, how I pasted the questions into the, into the Excel file. And the next thing I did, I selected uh, the type of question just for the first question, and I was able to, to drag and drop it for, for all the questions because all of the questions are going to be uh, yes and no ones. And I did nothing with the last column, so what do I do next? Uh, when I have the Excel file prepared, let's say this one is prepared, I go back to the questionnaire uh, wizard and I import the file there. And I'm presented with a dialog that allows me to work with the questions further. I am able to uh, exclude the questions that I don't want to be imported. I'm able to change their, their type in this dialog. If I had groups, I, was also, I would be also able to work with the groups. And it's possible to rename the questions here as well. So what to do next? Uh, you just need to finish the, the questionnaire wizard, the last three steps uh, we talked about during the last webinar, I believe. And you end up in the questionnaire designer with all the questions imported from the Excel file, where you can work on those further on, adding smart rules, rules, or whatever else need to be done uh, with the questionnaire. So, we are bringing a shortcut, a faster way to get the quest 
get the questions that you already have in some form into Questioner Designer. However, that's just the start of the journey in this area and there's definitely more to come in the next releases, so stay tuned. That's all from me and I'm turning it over to my colleague Edo. Stage is yours. Thank you very much, Miroslav, for very interesting information about the questionnaires and inspections and what we can see in the new release. So I'm here, my name is Edward Kesselli, and I'm here to tell you something more about what's new in the platform features or what kind of features are common or are um, can be seen in our products or accelerators. So let's jump into it. First of all, I would like to uh, tell you something more about the functionality of search within the tree view. Tree view, as you are familiar, has been introduced last uh, or during the last uh, release but we definitely have delivered uh, just mvp and right now we are enhancing the functionality of the of the tree views and the hierarchy views so what's there so basically when it comes what are the problems we are solving with this one i think it's kind of obvious uh, especially when some customer is creating or has a uh, very complex structure or tree view and cannot easily find items uh, which he or she is looking for. So basically we wanted to bring up some really very easy solution and the solution is that uh, right now anybody who has a tree view defined will be able to easily access this, uh, you know what he or she is looking for through the search bar filter or so we have introduced there this advanced search functionality directly on the tree view so by typing the searchable term into the search bar as you can see on the top of the in this example of top of the asset tree um, it will automatically highlight node i'm looking for if there is a complex hierarchy and uh, I can also use some kind of advanced tree functionality or just clicking the search all button next to the searchable item, which will search through all of the nodes in the tree, not only uh, all of the nodes which are there, not only preloaded ones. So the next one, it's also related to the tree view and basically it's uh, we wanted to bring some more value into it into the tree view and uh, of course improve the user experience as well so we reflected the feedback and took a look how does it uh, how does it behave right now what was the problem what was what was the problems was that um, if somebody has configured the tree view there was a question if child items contains any sub items currently on the defined tree is there any kind of uh, you know child item or sub child under the child so imagine that the hierarchy has uh, many levels or many child levels and in the previous release we have not looked at any child level which has been collapsed so and if it includes any other sub childs so um, so uh, we have been not showing this user needed to manually click on the expander arrow just to you know see whether there is something or not so there was some kind of situation that after clicking on the extender arrow uh, nothing happened because there was nothing and just uh, this kind of uh, expander arrow disappeared when there was something uh, typically child items has been loaded so the solution is we um during the expand action will automatically look if child items have any sub, sub items so what we did we automatically look what is behind child items and if there is something the expander arrow will uh, you know uh, stay uh, and if there is nothing uh, under the child item it will not uh, it will not appear at all so basically it looks like this uh, if anybody clicking on the expand arrow it will automatically look if there are any kind of sub items under the child items and basically you can see right after what is the structure and when it ends on what level okay let's jump into the next item 
which is redesigned schedule board. Schedule board is uh, like really heavily used by our customers. We know that one of the goals was to redesign experience, um, how people are working with the items which can be scheduled, uh, even if it is a work order or if it is case or any kind of appointment. So the issue was that um, some customers were telling us we cannot find uh, what need to be scheduled or how I can scroll the list of work orders because currently the work orders or the, the sources has been sorted horizontally. So there was basically horizontal scrolling. What is the What are the details of the work orders? So basically we wanted to take a look at it and improve this kind of um, work with the schedulable items, improve it, uh, make it more accessible and more intuitive. Solution is that schedulable source, in this case it can be a work order, is easily accessible on the right side uh, with accessible search function as well. So basically it looks like this. And as you can see, uh, we have replaced or we have moved the, the, the schedulable items on the right side. It can be easily found. Uh, the scrolling is better um, and uh, there is a dedicated search bar with a, with a really dedicated search bar where anybody can find what he or she is looking for. Another nice thing or a nice addition related to the scheduling is uh, defining of working hours per resource. Um, this is still in a preview because uh, we have delivered the basic functionality in this release, but we will be more working on the improvements, but I will tell you which one of them it will be. So customer problems was that, uh, for example, I cannot set the different working hours for my technicians. There are situations where technicians has have different working hours. Basically, there can be technicians or groups or crews who are working only during the morning or only during the evening or even during the weekend. We wanted to address that. So solution was that manager dispatcher can define working hours templates, for example, night shifts or weekend work and assign them to the resource, to the, to the particular and exact resource. So I can show you how does it work. Basically, there is a new entity called working hours. Um, uh, this feature is named as a preview, as I mentioned, because designer is still uh, will be available in the next release. Right now, we can define the working hours uh, in a JSON format as a string. So basically the first step is to define the template for working hour, like evening shift or morning shift. Second step is to uh, select the resource and, and resource and assign that kind of working hours template. And basically what you can see is also reflected on the scheduled board. So every single resource can have different working hours. It's also visually reflected. And if anybody is trying to scheduled some kind of uh, work order, you know, outside working hours, it will notify the schedule that something needs to be done. This resource is not available. That was all from my side. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. And I would suggest let's continue with other content regarding roots. And I will give the word to, Matt, to Peter Matik. So thank you, Edo. Uh, my name is Peter Matejik, and without any further ado, I will start with updates which are related to Root Planner. As you know, uh, Root Planner can help you to organize your appointments in a more efficient way so that you can visit as many customers as possible during that given day. <clears throat> it's a very good tool, but of course, there is always room for improvement. Uh, our partners faced a problem where they needed to extend out of the box functionality of uh, Root Planner. And because we uh, listen to our partners and work with them very closely, we have decided to bring this release new feature that address exactly 
uh, this issue. So uh, we have what, what we have done is that we brought uh, extension. We have brought uh, JS Bridge also for root planner, which can take uh, this tool to uh, next level and beyond out of the box functionality. What you can do with it is that you can subscribe to following events, allowing you to override configured rules like item added, removed, or item completed. You can also subscribe to events not available as a rules, for example, item saved, post saved, or root saved, post saved, or root reload. More uh, in relation to this functionality can be found in Resco Wiki on the link below. <clears throat> Next uh, topic is also related to uh, root planner, but this time to its extension that we call uh, roots AI. As you know, we have already two features available within roots AI, but there is a new challenge related to always changing situation on the road. So uh, we have brought solution for this. Optimization will take traffic information into account. So once you use uh, Roots AI, we made a new service available that automatically decides between the current state of the traffic or histor historical traffic data. This is done automatically and it depends on how far in the future the departure time is. This will bring you more accurate distance and travel times, and of course, more happy customers that can visit more uh, accounts or who can make more appointments during the given day. If you want to use this functionality, I will just remind just you can do it uh, from today. Just contact your RESCO partner, business development manager. If you don't have either of them, you can contact our sales at resco.net directly. Next uh, feature is, or next uh, improvement is related to uh, RESCO inspections on Realware. As you may know, uh, we have already made our RESCO inspections available on Realware, but a uh, problem that we have faced here is that our UI was not uh, made for this device, it was only available or made for uh, mobile devices like mobile phones or tablets. So uh, let's go step back and remind ourselves what uh, Realware really is. So you can see it's assisted reality device that can be completely uh, operated by your voice, so hands-free. It has brilliant microphone which can work uh, in noisy environments its display is equivalent to seven inch tablet and is built fully ruggedized so we can really use it in uh, rough and tough conditions. So as I said, the customer problem was that uh, UI was not really made for, for this device and text was very hard to read. So this release, I'm very happy to announce that uh, we have made new UI and UX, which is dedicated to this device, to Realware. So from now on, you can build guides or inspections, which will perfectly work with Realware. It will be, of course, uh, hands-free. You can use it only, you, you can operate it only with your voice. And as usually with Resco, it will work online and offline. And the best part is that we already have app which is available and is ready to be used and customized for your use case. Now I will play a short video that will show you how can be this device used. Resco Inspections is a solution that allows you to shape every step of your inspection process. Create custom, dynamic digital workflows like inspections, surveys, questionnaires, or custom processes 
for execution on any mobile device, now including the HMT1. Let's start by accessing RESCO inspections straight from Dynamics 365 and adjust our wind turbine inspection. Questionnaire Designer is one of the main components of RESCO inspections that allows users to build questionnaires in a data-driven user interface. Business or IT users can easily and efficiently design questionnaires that match your internal business processes. There are a wide variety of available question types to choose from in a drag-and-drop experience. Conceptually, this list of questions serves both as a guidance for workers and a control tool for checking the inspections process. You can also set up custom business logic for your questionnaires, utilizing smart elements or questionnaire rules. And once your questionnaire is ready, you can instantly deliver it to your field team via the RESCO Inspections app. Let's make an adjustment to our existing wind turbine inspection. Here, we will create a conditional question. So if the user indicates the electrical leads are in good condition, they will be prompted to the next part of the inspection. But if the electrical leads are faulty, the user is guided to take a picture of the electrical leads and visually describe their status so the back office can analyze the situation in more detail. We simply save the questionnaire, and the RESCO Inspections app will be updated with the latest version after synchronizing. Okay, so I've got the HMT1 headset on, and what you're seeing is the RealWare Explorer visualization tool. I'm just going to walk through the wind turbine inspection here and just follow along with me. My programs, inspections. a wind turbine inspection, next, helmet, eyewear, safety gloves, safety shoes, next, edit, circuit design, next, scan barcode, Next, edit, 5-6, navigate back, next, next, edit, September 1, today, okay, next, rusted, some flakes, next, Yes. Next. Edit. Three. Navigate back. Next. Yes. Next. Yes. Next. Good. Next. Back. Faulty. Next. Capture picture. Zoom level three. Take photo. Next. Edit. We can see that the electrical leads are corroded in three places. Accept. Next. Yes. Next. Edit. Despite being operational, I still think we should send a team to look at the electrical leads and possibly replace them. Accept. Next. Yes. Complete. Yes. And that's it, I've completed my inspection.
Now that we have completed our wind turbine inspection, let's see how the results are synchronized to the back end and made accessible. The Result Viewer app contains all completed questionnaires along with some filtering options. The questionnaire can also be linked to the, the account directly in Dynamics 365. There is some general information about the questionnaire itself. Then by clicking on questions, we can see a complete list of all the questions and answers executed on the HMT1 and recorded in Dynamics. We can even edit an in-progress progress questionnaire directly from Dynamics 365 using the Questionnaire Player component. There are several different ways to store and access the questionnaire data directly in Dynamics 365 so that it can be analyzed and used further in tools like Power BI. Okay, thank you. And sorry for the technical issues we had here. Uh, we were able to see a short video that demonstrates how easy it is to use Realware uh, with uh, Dynamics 365. And now let's go, or let's continue. Uh, sorry, uh, if you if you want to if you want to use uh, if you want to learn more about Realware and how to use it, in your case, please contact us at innovations@dresco.dresco.net. Next topic uh, here, which you made some uh, updates on, are our AR calls on Dynamics. In this, in this release, uh, we try to address suggestions from customers that is not always uh, desirable for experts in the office to have RESCO app open at all times. So from now on, it's, it will be possible to receive and place calls directly in the browser. Uh, for receiving calls, Browser notification needs to be enabled, as well as permissions for Dynamics web page. User uh, simply press the Houston command and calls a contact. There is a possibility to, to place calls from Dynamics, but some integration work, of course, needs to be done in web resource on a form. How it works is basically call call appears as a browser notification, and it is not needed to have the Dynamics tab active. When the expert picks up, the standard Houston AR calls interface is presented to them. And here you can see a nice view from the east wing of our office. Uh, after the call, it's possible to take notes and save them. They will save as a description in the phone calls entity. And basically, we hope that this convenience for the experts to place and receive AR calls in the browser will come handy to, to all users. And the last but not the least is uh, updates to our run report command. <clears throat> As you might know, uh, we have brought some uh, improvements to this command in the past, but uh, issue here was that uh, settings like format, what can be printed here in the 
like Word or PDF or commands that can be used were only possible to configure manually and served as a JSON string. In this release, we are bringing a new advanced mobile report configuration UI, especially for this command. And from now on, you can simply by clicking, choose, let's say what format or what command will be available for the users. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, this will be everything from me. And now uh, back to you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. So I'll now conclude our today's session. So as you have seen, there are quite a few updates with our release 14.2, so our autumn release for 2021. But what you have seen is not all. And if you would like to know more about all of these features that we've shown or learn about how we save API calls uh, with synchronizing attachments or, for example, the business process flow improvements uh, for Dynamics and some more features that we didn't put into this webinar, then head to our wiki page, doc, docs.resco.net, or use the bit.ly link you see on the screen to get to this site about this particular release and find out more information. I also encourage you, if you have any questions to the content you've seen so far, right now is the time when you can write them into the GoToWebinar window if you haven't uh, during the session directly. And because we are heading to the final segment of today's webinar, which is questions and answers. So let us know also which features you like, which features you want to use in your uh, future projects. And in between, I would like to ask my colleague Miro to take a look at some questions we received around the improvements in inspections. So Miro, can you please take the first question? No problem. So the first question uh, says that, can you update an existing questionnaire? And I take the liberty to uh, understand the question that it's probably connected with the uh, new way of creating questionnaires from uh, an Excel file. Uh, if that's the question, uh, there is not yet the possibility to import an existing questionnaire in the questionnaire wizard. However, the imp import export um, functionality uh, is, is present in the questionnaire designer, but uh, it will not allow you to manipulate the question in the UI I showed in during the webinar. So hopefully I understood the question right and the answer matches the question. Let me get to another, another one concerning uh, inspections functionality. So the question says, as for the importing Excel CSV files for questionnaire template creation, is it possible to import image files along with question? Uh, not yet. It's not possible. The Excel file only is able to import uh, the text. So st static images, mm, not possible to import. Let me check if there are other questions. Uh, yeah, I can take uh, the one regarding the run report command. So the question says, how do you access the advanced report config for the run report command? So we basically go to a form and uh, if you select the run report command, you can define, uh, I, th I think if I remember correctly, there are three dots. And within that, uh, you will be able to uh, configure the advanced possibilities for, for the run report command. I think that's uh, it mm -hmm. for the questions I can take. Yeah, this seems uh, like the questions for you. And now there are some questions for the segment that you presented, uh, Edel. 
Yes, yeah, so I can see some kind of questions regarding the tree view. So I will try to read it first and then and then answer. So as for tree view, it can be set in any types of views, public view, associated view, and so on. I would like to apply tree view for associated view. I can easily imagine our clients want to see the view on a form in a, in a subgrid. Yes, we also have this kind of um, requirement. It's not possible right now. Uh, it's very high in our backlog for the Q4. So in the next release, we are going to introduce also this kind of possibility to define a tree view. For example, on a form, uh, you can imagine it in the situation that you can have uh, uh, account entity and then you can see there also um, three four assets which belongs to that account another question regarding the tree view is uh, will it work with any hierarchical hierarchical structure assets work orders etc yes um there is a des powerful designer for this one you can define uh, um as complex structure as, as you as you wish it's a little bit more connected with the question which goes afterwards like um and i would be a blending of information be possible example cases uh for example in the in this um, asset hierarchy um if those kind of um entities are in some relation yes the blending is possible but there need to be some kind of connection between these two to to um to 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 define them and to display them in within the tree view mm -hmm. and i think this seems to be uh, all the questions that we could answer today but of course if there are more questions feel free to reach us at, at some of the email addresses here at Resco and I especially appreciate all the feedback around the features and the ideas that you have what could be possible with them as this gives us some information about what you like and what you would like to see improved and with this I would like to conclude this webinar and thank you for your attention the next Resco release is in December uh, so we will continue with this webinar uh, series after the december release is out but in between uh, i would like to also invite you to attend our conference resco next uh, which is in the online form in november 18th uh, november where all new exciting uh, new infos and, and news will be shared so uh, definitely one worth checking out so thank you for your attention and hope to hear each other again uh, after our winter release.